Engineer 775, first job of the new year. Pounded some posts, come back to a return customer, repeat customer, great guy. Uh, first system's been in for a couple years and we're, he built this nice, awesome business building and I don't know if it's a community center, what it is, he's gonna do a lot of things in there. He's got a lot of great ideas. And so we're coming back to add a 15K in batteries to this facility separate from that system that system runs his house the new system's running his business so he's bringing everything back to the property so that's awesome and so we're just getting set up and I wanted to get an intro video and get this uh, get this job in we showed up here a little bit late it's late in the afternoon We've got all the materials on site though if I can get these three posts in the ground I win because that way I can take my machine home driver home and two trailers home and then everything else is here. Our solar panels, inverters, batteries. So it'd be a really cool move to be able to take them trailers home. All right, let's get to work. Happy New Year. This is a ground mount I put in three years ago, two years ago, maybe two years ago. And things have changed at Sinclair a little bit. The purlins, the trusses, a little bit, the geometry have changed, but the clamps are pretty much the same. So tomorrow I will We'll build this array. We've got our posts on, and I think they're pretty good because you can see. Don't make a liar out of me. You can't see over there, but. Dun, 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 dun. Won't zoom over there. Trying to get a line up on there, but I'm telling you, you can see through all the holes, and that's how I know it's good. All right, simple little 24 panel ground mount, and then inside we're getting the uh, bottom end together I do some hand digging we got some landmines to uncover before we head to the meter we're gonna build this baby and we're in good shape I think all right so I like being able to take the equipment home deal with all the trash the first day we got here at 1230 it's five so that's nice four and a half hours and what it does for you is it doesn't kill you it's a pretty easy day and now you've, you've got a plan. You know what materials you need to bring back if you forgot any. And uh, so I'll stew on this all night and wake up at three in the morning and, oh, I need that. So we've got some electrical to work to do out here, land our solar, do our back and forth with grid and load. What a nice building this thing is. And, uh, we might be able to get this thing done in two and a half days. That'd be sweet. How are they doing in here? Oh, look at that. They've already built the battery stack. You put all the brackets on? Yeah. Wow. What's already? This is a little baby pipes. Oh. My camera phone's about to die. So we're going to use this pipe. It's a very simple little bracket system. You can get a rack if you want to do a fancier forest rack, but they're like $1,300, so it's hard to, kind of hard to justify. But and then there's the Amphenol connector debate, whether you like that or not, let me know. And then we're gonna have our 15K, our bypass, and then our back and forth to get this wired up. So it's like Willis is ready to go. Wes has got the inverter ready to land. In good shape with all our goodies. Are we forgetting anything? Uh, that's what I'm double checking. I don't believe so. We're ready to. We could um, get this thing built tomorrow, and then Monday will be a commissioning day, and then on to the next. So first job of the new year. We're in. Uh, this is nice. Nice to have a, a simple, straightforward job to kick it off. Okay, we just threw the Sinclair rack together. This is a small one, 24 panel. Before you do, before you put your rack in, you want to make sure you get your conduits in, and you wouldn't want to have to dig that with by hand. So what we do is get that two-inch pipe run or whatever size conduit you need, and we've got it run over to our outdoor wiring trough. So that was fun. We had a little challenge today. The excavator died. We borrowed the customers. You probably should never do that. Then they die, and then you feel bad. And uh, thankfully, there was a landscaper here who had a trencher. And he finished this off, and he actually helped me backfill it, which was awesome. 
So we're very thankful for that guy. What is his name? Blake, I think. Anyway, Blake and Malachi. So you want to get that conduit in, the pull box, everything, before you start messing around with the steel. Now, when you put up the steel, always start east to west and build it because of the way the Sinclair rack overlaps. Always start on the east, work to the west. Now, when we do our panels, this is a previous array we built for the customer's home. We're coming back two years later. We got larger panels. They're bifacial. Things change. Sinclair has changed. But it's pretty much the same. We just, uh, longer trusses, deeper post pounding, uh, longer purlins, a lot. There's a lot different. It looks the same, but it is not. So we're trying to kind of end up with our panels having the same edge. But when you add your panels to your Sinclair, you want to start, I, this is just my tricks after build. How many arrays have we built? Goodness gracious. No comment. A hundred. I don't know. 137, Wes says. Um, we start from the west to the east. We want to go this way because of the way the purlins overlap. So if you don't want to have to cut these ends off, make sure you're nice and square lined up. And then I like to come in about four to five inches. I come in, if I have to cut, our bandsaw is comfortable i'm comfortable coming in about five inches and it fits and i can just go right on up there and cut which i will do on the other end if there's any excess so what i typically do is take the number of panels the width of the panel times the number of panels plus the gaps between the panels times the clamp thickness which is 0.4 inches plus the five inches that i don't want to cut off and that gives me on this job 42 feet i'm going to measure from this side down there, and my start point is 42 foot from this corner. All right, I'm getting a little too too fast at this. We got a uh, ground mount is in wired. Everything's landed in the disco. It's Friday afternoon. We're ready to get out of here. So we're we've got a day and a half. We showed up at 12:30 yesterday. Pounded our posts and. That was fun. So we got our fuse. We got our disconnects. We got. We put a nice outdoor gutter, which gave us lots of room to work in. We're gonna do a cool trick. I hope at the end of this, where I'm working towards, the customer has a Ford Lightning, and we're going to. Um, I want to use it to charge. I'm gonna take that 240 volt, 30 amp output. I'm gonna put a generator inlet in there and. Uh, hook it to the Solark. So lightning to Solark coming up. Late made provision. There's a big gap here in case this is such a huge building. I just have a feeling that he might want to slap another 15 K in there at some point. Got room for that room for more batteries. Starting off with a small 30 K of pipes and my battery's dying. It was a little difficult because of the workspace violation. We had to come three feet off of that panel to be able to begin anything so hence the piping will clean up the plywood and make that all nice but so we took all our wires through and we have a lot of room in the 12 inch gutter outside 12 inch gutter in here to do everything we need so i just made provision for a future installation so day and a half and inspection on monday we got a lot of little things to wrap up but for the most part we knocked it out so anyway i'll see you on monday okay we're back day three putting the finishing touches on the system 15k and what's going on now is we're adding a one of those reliance generator inlets but it's not for any type of normal generator we're gonna try to hook up the ford lightning that this customer has with an l1430 cord that he has and see if we can interface with the Solark, charge the pites battery off of the 15k and i was talking to the customer about his ford lightning and looking at his power outputs on the truck and it has an l1430 plug so i said why don't we try to charge lithium to lithium and see how it performs all right it's a wrap for this job and the, the grand finale is i got a ford lightning outside and we're trying to start charging the battery. It's showing I got a frequency of 61 hertz, which is cool, but 14 volts ain't cool. And 
Now it just went up to 238. All right, so the owners out there told them to make sure that that was on. And hopefully it doesn't trip the truck. And so we've got 238 volts coming from the Ford Lightning, 60 hertz of power. Signal's on, so the Solark is saying, give it to me. It's got a reconnect time, so I'm waiting for a relay to close and connect to this truck. What am I missing? Everything's grounded, bonded, all that fun stuff. See if we can get this thing to turn into a, a Ford Lightning. No, it'll turn into a little generator icon if it works. Why is it not connecting? I still, I've got two thirty. Oh, the reconnect time is 60 seconds. So patience, Scott. Patience. It Did, tripped. It tripped. And so I turned it back on. There, there it goes. It tripped again. It tripped again. Nice little system wrap up here. The only thing that let me down was I tried to get the Ford Lightning. Maybe you can help me out. Uh, the inverter saw the 245 volts from the truck and it saw the right frequency. Well within range. Every time it tried to connect, the Ford tripped. So that was a bummer. So I've reset it back to be able to use with a normal generator. Um, I will have to revisit that one. So anyway, if you've got any questions, let me know. If you've got any input on using an electric vehicle to charge, let me know, because I would love to have done that for the customer. So that's kind of a, a bummer let down at the end of the job. But we're here charging away and all on solar and minimizing the grid. You see no grid being used. Again, this is new construction, so it's not loaded up yet. So we'll uh, wait till we get this thing loaded and then we can do some load testing and get it connected to the PowerView app. All right, Engineer 775 signing off.